of our goals when designing Machine 1.5 was to improve the overall workflow. One of the ways we've done this is by making certain features in the software even more accessible via the hardware in the form of shortcuts. Firstly, we've made some changes that help you quickly change the volume and tuning of either particular groups or particular sounds. If I want to lower the level of this particular drum kit, say uh, the one in Group A, I'll just hold Group A, turn the master volume knob, and you can hear there goes my drum kit. I can use the same method to retune the drum kit. This also works for individual sounds. Uh, if I want to take the snare drum, change the volume of just the snare drum, I'll hold the pad down, move the master volume. Moving the tempo knob will retune it. We've also made some changes to the navigate button that help you navigate around the software side of your session much easier. If I hold down navigate, these top two buttons will either zoom in or zoom out on scenes, as well as scrolling left to right. The lower ones work exactly the same except for individual patterns. Here I'm zooming in on the pattern, and here I'm scrolling left and right. The last two buttons will allow you to vertically scroll through the sounds in case any of the other sounds are hidden by the modulation area. Lastly, we've added a quick replace function. If you'd like to hold the record and erase button, it will immediately overwrite the current sound while recording a new one. We've also added some new selection features that make it easier to both select sounds as well as the particular events corresponding to those sounds. The first thing is that we've changed the way you select particular sounds so that you can hit a particular pad without causing that pad to sound. The default behavior, for example, if I hit the snare drum, will be that you hear the snare drum. If I'm in a live performance situation, however, and I'd like to select that pad without causing it to sound, it's as simple as holding the select button and then pressing the pad. Now the sound on that pad is being selected, but it's not causing it to be audible. Secondly, you'll notice that when I hold the select button down, I have a new tab at the top called events. If I press the events button, you get a couple other options here on the left LCD. The first is all. Pressing that will cause all of the events in this pattern to be selected in one go. Hitting the none button will deselect any selected events inside that pattern. You'll also notice I have some new parameters on the right LCD that say start and end. What these allow you to do is get a specific selection range for a given sound. So you're only selecting particular events. If I hit my snare drum again, for example, the first thing you'll notice is that it will immediately select all the events on that snare drum track. I can now use these two knobs to hone in on a particular selection range. Same thing with a kick drum. I'll press the kick drum, which will now select all events, and now I can use these two knobs to trim it down to only the events that I'm interested in. The reason this is important is because some of the functions in machine will apply only to the selected events. Using this method, you can be sure that that function will only affect the events you see are selected. In machine 1.5, we've added several polyphony options on the sound level. When you're on the sound tab and you also have source selected in the right LCD, the very first page will show you some voice settings. This is a little bit different than the prior version. You'll notice how I have several additional options here. The first is polyphony. Now I have a loop on this particular pad, and if I hit it multiple times, you'll hear it stacking on top of itself several times. If I reduce the polyphony to one, however, you'll hear it force itself off. It's a way to get the same pad to choke itself. Additionally, if I open the synth lead here, you'll hear that that's polyphonic. If I turn the polyphony down past one, it will expose an additional option that says legato. This will also give you a glide parameter as well. This is a way you can do classic monophonic synth leads, even with portamento if you like. 
Machine now gives you the ability to load a particular kit with or without its corresponding pattern data. Let me show you how this works. When in browse mode, you always have the option to load a particular kit based on some criteria you've selected. I've selected an urban kit, and I've already loaded this one called the drive-by kit, which sounds like so. However, if I deselect the pattern button, it will cause a kit to be loaded without its corresponding pattern data. This is useful if you'd like to hear what another kit sounds like using the pattern data that's already in machine. So I'm actually going to load this one, the fully charged kit, but I've deselected pattern, so it won't replace that existing pattern data. And now I can hear what this kit sounds like with the other pattern. We've added a new tab inside the machine preferences called Defaults. This allows you to specify some customizable defaults that will be applied every time you start machines, such as the length of patterns, as well as the default input quantize mode. Additionally, you can specify that the current project will always be loaded every time you start machine. This is good if you find yourself applying the same settings each time you load machine. I would like them to be permanent.